Ever since people first looked up at the sky and watched the birds, we've had this desire to fly. One of the first inventors of a flying machine was Leonardo da Vinci. Inventor, painter, you know, all around Renaissance type of guy. Back in the early 1500s, he used his anatomical studies of birds in flight to design a set of wings. Even though his ideas hardly got off the ground, it paved the way for later inventors who really took off. Aviation. What a concept. When most people think of early American aviators, the first names that usually come to mind are the Wright brothers and Amelia Earhart. Bessie Coleman, or Queen Bess as she was known to her friends, was America's first black woman aviator and one of our country's greatest stunt pilots. Back in the early 1920s, she dazzled thousands worth her daring feats of aerial acrobatics. And even though she didn't land in many history books, she was a true pioneer in American aviation. Right here. No, oh, this right one. Here. Why? Right here. Well, because you can fit more. You can fit eight, eight right here. No, you can well, fit this 12 right here. Yes, you can. Thing. One, two, three, four, five, six, Girls, seven, what's happening? Twelve. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Dad. Hi, Dr. Dad. What's going on? Well, we were looking through some of your old magazines, uh -huh. and Kim found this really cool plan for an old model glider. We figured we'd try it. Yeah, and if this one works, we can build a full-size one that we can actually fly. All right. Whoa, the only uh, way I'm going to fly in a plane that you build, Kim, is with a parachute. That's so funny. Well, Dad, now that you're here, can we ask you a few questions? Try. Yeah, something here doesn't make sense. It says that the wing of the plane has to be curved on the top mm -hmm. and flat on the bottom. Why can't it just be flat on both sides? Well, it has to do with something we call Bernoulli's Principle. Bernoulli? Isn't that some sort of pasta? No, 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 no. Daniel Bernoulli was this Swiss scientist who lived in like the mid-1700s. And what he found out was that if you took a fluid like air or water and you got it moving real, real fast, that you could change the pressure on it. And if you change the pressure in just the right way, you can get things to, to lift up and you don't know what I'm talking about. All right, look, exactly. I'll tell you what. All right, take, get the hair dryer. Get the hair dryer. We can do a quick experiment here. And I have... Uh, hmm. One of these styrofoam bowls should do well. Plug it in? Yeah, plug it in. Let's see what we can do here. All right, now turn it on. And uh, now watch what happens. I'm going to put the ball on top of the air. And the air is moving real fast, so the ball floats. Cool. Can I try it? All right. Let's hold it real still. All right. That's not really surprising since the blow dryer is just keeping it up with air. Okay. I don't get what a hair dryer has to do with the cover of the wing. All right, the right. Wing. patience, patience. Okay. Tilt it a little bit, Tim. All right, now watch the ball. Look, it's starting to spin. And it's still staying up, even though she tilted the dryer. OK, now, what's going on here? I think I get it. So the air hits the ball and makes it spin really, really fast. Mm -hmm. So then the spinning ball somehow reduces air pressure. Mm -hmm. So the curve of the ball is like the curve of the wing? Almost. Well, hold on a minute. I've been on a lot of planes, and the last time I checked, Wings don't spin. Wings don't have to spin. Here, let me show you. We got the model over here. This is the best way of doing it. All right, on top of the wing, this is something we call an airfoil, all right? Now, if you look at the edge of the wing, uh, edge on, you see that the top is curved, the bottom is flat. 
So that means as the wing goes through the air, what's going on is the air going over the wing has to go a little further distance. So it gets stretched out, all right? And that reduces the pressure on the top. So the air underneath, air is a fluid, it flows in and, and gives it what we call lift. So the only thing that keeps the plane up is the air pushing up from below? That's right. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. after, after you do that, we'll go, ahead and, we'll go ahead and work together to attach all of these. Hey, Dad, what do you think they're doing over there? I don't know. Let's go see. Go ahead, Katie. Tighten it a little bit. Hey, hi. Hey, what you doing over hi, there? Hi. How you doing? Oh, hi. hi. We're uh, reassembling our airplane. You're reassembling your airplane? Would you get a kit or something? No, we just got baby buggy and some cut up old ladder. What are you, members of some sort of airplane model building club or something? No, I'm a fifth grade teacher. This is one of my students. This is our science project. Oh, so this was a class thing. You were trying to... Learn about airplanes? Sure. I wanted to find out how they flew and worked and whatever else they whatever else they could find out about scientific methods. How'd you get started on this? Well, we started by testing out everything. We built it, we tested it, and went. So what did you use on this? It looks like you know, plastic wrap. wrap. <laughs> no, it's a, it's the stuff that you use to cover up windows, insulating film. Cool. What keeps it up? Kids power. We made a pulley system and kids pull it. So you just pulled on it and it, and it made it go up? Yeah. All right, everybody ready? How do you keep it up? The wings. Yeah, the wings. Uh, wings get lit from two different things. Uh, you ever stuck your hand out a car window? Mm -hmm. You've done that before? When you stick it straight in the wind, what happens? It just, just kind of stays there. But if you tilt your hand up a little bit, the wind pushes it back, right? Right. Well, that's one way a wing gets its lift. That's called angle of attack. But when you have a wing that you want to fly slow, like we did for safety, then what you do is you make the top of the wing curved and the bottom flat. And on the flat side, the air goes slower. On the curved top, the air goes faster. And the faster air has lower pressure. And so it's kind of like a giant vacuum cleaner on the top going, <laughs> kind of sucking it up. So that's Bernoulli's principle, like with the shape of a Frisbee being curved on top. Now. Nobody actually goes on this, do they? Of course. Who? Well, it took us a while to find somebody crazy enough, but we did, right, Katie? Yeah. I'm afraid I flew in it. <laughs> okay, let's go! Are you ever going to put students in this? No, I don't think we could do something like that, but I hope from this project that maybe when they grow up, they'll want to fly. OK, I'm beginning to understand how this wing thing works, but how do they steer the plane? I know. They use a steering wheel. But how does the steering wheel work? You see, when they use the steering wheel, the flaps on the plane move up and down, so the plane moves from side to side. That's right, Kim. Um... Here, let me show you with the remote control. Since when did you become such an expert on flying? My uncle's a pilot, and he told me all about this stuff. Okay, now, I'm going to turn on this remote control unit, and this is going to control the model here. Now, these two sticks, that's like the steering wheel in the plane. Now, if I move them from side to side, watch the wings. Okay? You see those flaps go up and down. We call those ailerons, and they control the side-to-side -side movement of the plane. Now, when I do that, also, watch this rudder back here, this red and white part. Okay. What does it do? Side to side. Side to side. side, to side. It's just like the rudder on a boat going through the water. So if you turn the rudder on a boat, the boat will turn. While the rudder on the plane will turn the plane. Now, if you want the plane to go up and down, that's something we call pitch. We have to control this flap back here. And this flap is what we call the elevator on the tail. So watch. If I move that up and down, you see it goes up and down. And this uses Bernoulli's principle to give you pitch, the up and down motion. It would be so cool to fly a plane. Yeah. yeah. Hi, excuse me. Hi. Is this your plane? Sure is. Do you mind if we ask you a couple of questions? No, not at all. My name's Steve, and uh, this is my daughter, Olivia. Hi, Hi, Steve. Hi, Olivia. I'm Angela. And uh, Olivia's been studying about airplanes a little bit, and uh, she had a couple of questions, so we figured come out to the airport and see some firsthand. Great. How do you make it go up and down? Well. We do it by moving the yoke, which is, we call it a yoke, it's the uh, steering wheel. It's just like the steering wheel in a car. And what we do is when we move the yoke, 
it, it moves the elevator, which is back here on this part of the airplane. Mm -hmm. And what it does is if you move it up, it deflects the tail down and the nose up. And then vice versa, if you go down, it deflects the nose down. How do you steer? Well, we steer in two ways. One's with the rudder and one's with the ailerons. And the rudder we move with our feet and it moves this big rudder back here when we move our feet left or right, left and right. And what happens is the rudder is deflected one way or the other. Like, for instance, this way, when it's deflected this way, the nose goes this way. So that makes you turn to the right. Now you said you steer with the wings? Yes. The ailerons? Ailerons. How does, that, how does that work? Well, when we move inside the steering wheel, left or right, it moves the ailerons on the wings. They're right up here. I'll, I can show you. Okay. okay. Great. Thanks. These are the ailerons. What they do is, as you steer one way or the other, they go up and down. And the wing goes the opposite way. And when one is down, the other one is up, or just vice, if this one's up, then that one over on the other side is down. What happens is the wind comes across here, deflects this wing down, and the other wing up, and it makes the airplane go like this. And I saw the wheel move when you Yeah, they move it. together. That's how, that's how it works. How do you land? Well, what we do is, initially, you just start pointing the airplane down. We talked about how it goes down. We just fly the airplane to the ground, slow it down so that it's not creating as much lift. And hopefully, if you do everything just perfect, right as you touch down the ground, you lose all your lift. So it's really gravity that makes you come back down. That's, that's exactly what it is. Now, the best way to find out is to go flying. Can I? Well, I guess so, but uh, be careful, huh? OK. Cool. I'll see you when you get back down. OK, okay. step right here and right up on the all bike right. part. To fly an airplane by yourself, all, only age you have to be is 16. But to get an airplane uh, and to get your actually get your license, you have to be 17. When did you get interested in it? Well, after I finished school, I went up someone like like this. Someone took me flying, very much like what we're doing now, and uh, I, I loved it. I, and I found out that it's not quite as hard as ever I thought it would be. It's kind of easy once you get the general basics, like we talked about earlier. How many years did it take? Well, for me, it didn't even take a year. Um, I, I did it in about, I finished all my ratings in about eight months, but for like for you to learn, it'll take you 40 hours to get to be a pilot. You'll have to fly 20 hours with an instructor and 20 hours by yourself solo. Well, we talked about Bernoulli's principle and how the ailerons and the elevators and the rudder and everything control the plane. You think you have enough information now to go and build your glider? Well, I think I'm getting the hang of it, see? This is just like the wing. The air on the top goes faster than the air on the bottom, and that produces lift. It all seems simple enough. Yeah, it works on almost the same principle as a wing. It's just like this boomerang. See, it's curved on the top and flat on the bottom, so it has greater speed. Yeah, boomerangs are airfoils, and so are wings, and so are flying disc things. So, you know, basically, it's all the same. Well, thanks, Dad. Who knows? Maybe we'll name our plane after you. All right, but listen, before you go flying off into the wild blue yonder, make sure you tell your mother because you know how she hates for you to be late for dinner, okay? Okay. All right, girls, take it easy. Bye, Dad. Have fun. It's got, as I'm saying, it's got to be right here. No. no. This one. Right. No, it should be here. Why? This one. Because this looks so much better. No, it's well, not the look. Yes, it's it does. You can test Bernoulli's principle right in the comfort of your own home. All you need is a sheet of paper. Fold down the long side in the half inch sections so that it makes a wing about three inches wide. The folds should overlap each other so that they make a curved section on the top. Crease the wing down the middle and let it fly. With a little practice, you'll be soaring in no time. 